Qual è la visione di Tim Weaver sul ruolo della, della tecnologia nel, nel mondo del lavoro? Quindi qual è il ruolo che la tecnologia assume nel mondo del lavoro? So we believe there are many uh, technology uh, megatrends at work at the moment uh, and we believe that um, digital technology can help a lot to improve uh, the labor uh, in today's companies. Uh, if we look at uh, what work is being done by companies today, then if you have the right set of technology, software and hardware, then you can simplify uh, the work uh, very often. You can improve the efficiency of the work you can uh, get more customer friendly. You can often also uh, improve the satisfaction of the workers themselves in performing the tasks. Uh, and of course, last but not least, uh, if you use technology in the right way, there's also the ability to uh, be much more sustainable, have less carbon uh, emissions, clearly because of less work, more remote work, more home office uh, and so forth. So we believe that there is a significant amount of benefits uh, that digitalization and use of technology can bring uh, and uh, that has been around for quite a while already if you think about uh, other markets um, in europe and also uh, across the world i think many companies have understood that uh, digital technology is actually a great enabler uh, for example they have used it in uh, industry of things uh, inter internet of things um, circumstances they've used it for automation software robots uh, remote control remote maintenance report remote repair of uh, equipment and things everywhere in the world and that's a very uh, uh, significant trend that we're seeing all around the world and it's actually present um, in all industries that's also quite interesting Uh, that it's company of all sizes. Uh, there's very innovative mid-sized companies uh, across the globe in many markets that have been focusing on digital innovation and they have been able uh, to change their business processes and improve the way they work uh, for the benefit of their customers, workers uh, and the environment alike, as I said before. So uh, a very global trend, uh, lots of opportunities, lots of possibilities uh, that technology can bring. Uh, and as TeamViewer, we believe that we are right in the center of it. Uh, our mission is to connect all the different devices and operating systems that you have in a company. So thereby, we basically enable the digital way of working in a company. And that's also one of the core drivers uh, of growth that we, uh, that we see for us. Of course, if you look at uh, the last month, uh, the kind of Corona situation, I think uh, when we've seen from our numbers and the customer feedback that we got, that this uh, situation has really accelerated many of the trends that we've been seeing before. So everything which I mentioned before uh, came to play uh, in a very kind of short time frame, um, beginning uh, in Asia, uh, specifically China at the beginning of the year, but then very quickly Uh, also coming into Europe. And I think suddenly many companies who have not been that active in digitalization before and also public institutions, by the way, they suddenly had the situation that they needed to address all these topics uh, very quickly um, because they needed to enable uh, their employees to work remotely, uh, which if you think about it is uh, very core to what I've been describing before, all the trends we had before, less travel, uh, more remote work, remote maintenance, uh, access to information in different parts of the world. So all of that comes down to enabling people to work from remote places. Uh, and that had to be done within days. Uh, so what we saw here uh, is during the pandemic that suddenly many companies had to think through exactly these mega trends, uh, but in a very, very, very short time frame. Uh, and that's quite interesting because it showed these companies that uh, the digital way of working goes far beyond uh, home office work. So um, many companies or most companies in the past, they typically focused on um, enabling a few people or smaller groups in their organization to work from home. Uh, and, and that was typically done one day per week or so but the involvement, the operational involvement of these people when they were working from home was very light. So a few meetings, video meetings, maybe a few, uh, a bit of desk work, some phone calls, uh, very flexible, but very limited in functionality. So, and what happened to, uh, during the pandemic, 
uh, and is still happening now is that suddenly all the different job roles that you can find in a company had to be digitalized. So uh, people had to be able to access machines from the distance, access back office systems uh, from the distance, issue transactions, handle customer requests. All of that had to be done uh, remotely. Uh, and there were many companies that actually enabled almost 100% of their people to work remotely. And this has shown to these companies quite nicely uh, what it actually entails when we talk about digitalization. Because in reality, uh, it goes far beyond the classical desk uh, home office work. It is all about uh, um, remote enabling for all job functions everywhere across the globe, in all locations and in all departments. Uh, and that requires really thinking through uh, new ways of working, new processes. Uh, and that was a almost like a showcase of what we see uh, for some years now, but now much more accelerated uh, across all companies. The nice thing then is also if there is more digitalization and if companies um, are actually working on these topics uh, uh, with focus, um, then there is more innovation. There's more uh, business models. There is disruption uh, very clearly. Uh, and that can be very positive disruption because there is more business models are possible if you use remote work. You can be more efficient. You can be more customer friendly. You can service more customers in the same amount of time. So there's a lot of many good things which uh, can help companies to grow if they really embark on this. Of course, there's also there's the flip side of that. Uh, while 90% uh, is, uh, is probably positive of technology use uh, and creates lots of opportunities in all the area I mentioned, there is a flip side of it, which is the social component. Um, because some parts uh, of the work in a company, uh, some sorts of work uh, might change uh, very significantly, might also go away. Uh, also, working remotely means less connectivity with people in an organization. So I think uh, the future of work will also entail thinking through the right procedures, the right processes, the right policies, uh, uh, and also maybe changes to the labor law to make sure uh, employees actually really like it, benefit from it, uh, and there's a good new way of working with each other, which combines the digital opportunity uh, with the absolutely required uh, connectivity between people in organization, because in the end, uh, it's people working with people, and that should always be that should always be very very important. But it's this uh, duality which we need. We need the technology advancement and at the same time uh, the social component to it. And if both come together, we've seen very innovative companies that uh, can create significant um, opportunities out of the use of technology. In che modo Team Weaver ha supportato le organizzazioni sia del settore pubblico che di quello privato durante l'emergenza Covid-19? So as TeamViewer, we offer a very broad set uh, of functionalities. Uh, we start by connecting the enterprise. That's how we call it. So all the different devices, computers, machines, laptops, phones that are present in a company are actually all connected to a single platform, which means any device can, to speak, uh, can speak to any other device. Uh, and you can remotely control, manage, maintain a device uh, from any other device. So that's a very broad set of functionality which we bring. And that means in this uh, era or in this phase of the pandemic that we've been seeing now, uh, many companies were leaning towards us and were calling in because they felt they need one platform, one connectivity solution which allows them to drive very different uh, use cases. And by use cases, we mean effectively different workers uh, in different parts of a company trying to work remotely. Um, and there is certainly uh, technologies to make somebody who works from the office uh, to access the, um, their computer in the office. Uh, there is also specialized solutions maybe for parts of the IoT value chain uh, and so forth. But if, you, if a company wants to make a step change in digitalizing their processes, uh, that's actually they need a single platform um, that allows to remotely control a production machine, but also have somebody remotely connect the, to the CRM system and doing video collaboration and all of that uh, in different departments uh, at the same time. 
So we provided this um, connectivity solution and therefore I think we have been uh, able and very proud that we were able to help many companies uh, across the globe and in all countries um, very quickly uh, with a solution that gets them back to their normal way of working uh, or their normal processes, but then done uh, remotely. So that was the uh, that was the key thing that we have a one-stop uh, solution, so to say, very easy to deploy all from the cloud. And uh, uh, so within a few days, you can be up and running and be operational and in a very flexible way globally uh, uh, at very high security standards um, made in Europe, so to say. So that was the key thing. So we were able to help many business customers when they were in need. They called in, they needed more capacity, they needed a new solution. They had something which they find is not workable, not good enough. So we helped them to get to a better solution. Uh, and that was a very important piece uh, of our business activity during uh, the, the pandemic. Um, and we were trying everything we could to help these customers as quickly as possible. Because at the same time, uh, needless to say, we also had to change our processes. Uh, we are very much used to homeworking and we are very much used to remote work by the nature of what we do. Uh, but during this, those weeks, uh, we actually had to put all our people to work from home, uh, customer care, sales, uh, pre-sales engineering, uh, R&D, all these people. Uh, so therefore we had to organize uh, during that time uh, in March to make sure we can best uh, serve our customers who were calling in uh, very significantly and needed help very urgently. So that's the commercial side uh, of things that we did. Uh, and uh, of course, we, we had um, kind of very good demand during those times. Uh, we, I think, did the best we could in terms of helping customers who had questions. Uh, it was a stressful time because, as, as I said, everybody working from home, but I think we were keeping up uh, quite well. There is the there is the non-commercial side of things as well, uh, where we where we took some uh, action. And the first thing we did, even before we were selling more of our licenses, was we made sure that everybody or any company uh, that needed the solution to connect to their workplace and did not have a license or a solution in place, they could download TeamViewer and use it for free uh during the corona crisis to make sure everybody stays connected as as much as possible um so the way it works for team viewer is uh you can download the product on our website you can use it for connectivity as long as you use it for personal use um there is no charge to it you get the full functionality it's a free product but of course in a company environment uh you need to have a license to work from that and we uh, do regular uh, checks and plausibility checks to see whether a license should be used or not in a certain environment. We've completely refrained from all these uh, checking and all these uh, uh, and all this uh, reminders and enforcement, so to say, uh, that it's a licensed product for the time of the pandemic. We basically said whoever needs connectivity can download the product, uh, you work with it, use it, let's get through the crisis, uh, and then we sort out the economics afterwards. And uh, I think that was a big move. Uh, we started with that uh, in China uh, when the pandemic started in China. Uh, of course, that increases the load of the network very significantly, many more devices online. So we had to also uh, invest in our infrastructure, make sure we keep up with it, uh, and, uh, and ensure the quality of service that the paying customers are used to. And I think we've done quite well in doing so, but the product was for free. The next thing we then also did, we got significant uh, requests uh, for schools, for example, uh, here in Germany, but also in other markets, to use our video conferencing platform, Bliss, uh, which has been in the market for quite some time. Um, uh, it's not very strategic for us, but of course, uh, many companies needed video collaboration. There is competitive products out there. They're mostly coming from uh, from the United States. Some like it, some don't like it. With some were looking for European solutions, and we decided that we make uh, this uh, product available for free for schools and universities to allow a certain form of distance learning um, and remote learning, which uh, in quite some countries, schools, universities were struggling with. So there's always the leaders who have a perfect system in place, but there's many, many of these institutions who didn't, uh, and, and they are happy users uh, of our platform now uh, to get the distance learning going, because in many markets, it is still the case um, that, that um, students can only go to school every second week, every third week. So therefore, uh, 
very good take up of this as well. And we were uh, very happy to provide that solution. The last thing we did is uh, we I have a solution for um, uh, to provide field support to experts out there in the field. It's called Pilot. It's using augmented reality. And it's a key theme or key measure to have uh, experts in a central location uh, and not so much expert in a far away location uh, and one person can help the other. And we've uh, made that available for free to medical institutions. So uh, hospitals specifically, think about a hospital where you're missing uh, the key expertise in the hospital, but the expertise is available in other places. Uh, for example, to maintain um, uh, medical equipment, to adjust equipment, to get people trained. Uh, and you can use our solution to do that. Uh, so one person is helping the other remotely uh, with markers, with augmented reality, with video uh, snippets, and actually to, to help people um, do the adjustment in the right way. And we've also made that available uh, for Fury during those times. So quite some things uh, that we were uh, just giving away to make sure uh, we help where we can and at the same time serving customers. Uh, and that has then uh, led to uh, good business development, but I think also a good contribution to society during those difficult times. Quali sono le lezioni apprese in questo particolare periodo storico che possono rivelarsi utili per il futuro? I think one, the, the first thing that came up, I think, is um, with the globalization being so present everywhere, uh, I think it also shows that there is lots of opportunity from globalization, lots of upside, uh, lots of wealth that's being created, but uh, also the business system is, has gotten much more fragile. I think with a uh, pandemic like this, I think we've all seen how quickly global supply chains are affected, uh, workers uh, are affected, companies are affected, and we still see very, very significant uh, impacts on certain industries and certain companies. Uh, and uh, I think that's something to note and won't go away. Uh, the world is very connected. Uh, clearly, there will be mitigation uh, now after the learnings from uh, from COVID, but I think overall a globalized world uh, is also fragile at times, uh, and I think that's something uh, companies uh, need to accept and also uh, need to prepare for. And I think with the respect to remote working uh, and preparing a workforce for a situation like this, be it a pandemic or any other crisis, I think those who had been thinking through the digital agenda before, I think they benefited uh, clearly. Uh, you can see that some companies have been very resilient uh, because they had the system in place. They couldn't, they could continue to work uh, with their workforce uh, and they winning market share and they are in a better place than companies who uh, got hit harder because they uh, they weren't prepared um, and, uh, and and hadn't thought through um, digitalization in that sense. And I think it's always this uh, uh, this this moments of truth where suddenly trends which many people have talked about, uh, which look like a nice to have, suddenly you are in a situation where they become must haves. Uh, that happens all the time. Uh, and I think it's always a good learning to go back to the drawing board and say, well, as a company, how well are we actually prepared if anything hits us? Uh, and I think with uh, investors also looking at the ESG agenda of companies, looking at the resilience and the preparedness of companies, I think it's very important for leadership teams uh, uh, in a company and for all stakeholders to watch out for these things uh, because there's always there's always something that can come um, and uh, making use of technology that is available to protect yourself and prepare yourself uh, is, a, is a very important theme and I think that's clearly a learning that uh, you better prepare in good times you better focus on these uh, projects in good times when you have the time uh, and the resources and, and the share of mind to do so, because once a crisis hits you, it's always very hard uh, uh, to get everything going at the same time. So I think that that's important. Uh, thirdly, I think um, uh, specifically to this crisis, I think it's worth noting that security is always very important um, because whenever there is a crisis situation, there is a phase where everybody tries to adjust and prepare. But very quickly thereafter, there's also new threats uh, 
um, because new people are taking advantage of vulnerabilities um, and therefore uh, making sure whatever you deploy, however you, you react to a certain crisis situation is safe, secure, robust, high quality uh, is very important uh, because the, the more you patch, so to say, uh, your company to prepare, the more vulnerable you are afterwards. Uh, and, uh, and that's an important learning as well. Uh, also, personally, I have to say how quickly um, people take advantage of vulnerabilities, even when the whole world is in crisis and everybody is trying to fight through health issues uh, and avoid fatalities. Um, and, and every company is trying its best uh, to live through it, even in those times. Uh, uh, it doesn't take long for criminals to come along and take advantage of it, uh, be it in software or physically and retail. So in many, many places where this happened. And I think uh, uh, in crisis, uh, security is equally important, uh, is, a, uh, is another learning. Um, and I think if we get these situations, uh, I think the pandemic also showed us that it's a very broad uh, effect that we're seeing from there. So this was not like in many other situations, um, a certain sector, certain company size, certain country, certain market, certain business process where we had problems like in other crises before. Uh, I think this one has showed us that things can go broad very quickly uh, with effects on machines, on people, on systems, on supply chain. And therefore, it was also so important to have the right procedures in place, the right policies in place. Uh, and once the corona crisis cools down a little bit, which we all hope, I think it's a good moment to step back a little bit and say, OK, what do we need to adjust uh, in terms of in, in our procedures, labor law, legal uh, requirements, security requirements in order to create a framework which helps us uh, to better prepare for the next crisis and not have the technology in place, but missing the right laws and the right procedures uh, and, uh, and vice versa. Um, and I think the last point is that in the end, uh, it, it's also we have to take care of our people uh, in, in companies, in society, with all the technology and all the emergency measures that we have in the very end. Uh, that helps us a few weeks to organize in a certain way, but then uh, people need care. Uh, we need to make sure they can connect with each other, they can work with each other. Uh, so this requires a whole lot of preparational work uh, and also extra effort to make sure people are close to the business, close to the society, close to other institutions, schools, universities, churches, and so forth. Um, so very important to have a very holistic view on that. And I think this crisis, if I sum it all up for me, it's this it is this perfect storm situation where it shows all your weaknesses in a company. Uh, you can identify them and then you need to repair. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's much harder than a certain crisis in a certain environment where maybe 5% or 10% of your business is affected. This time, 100% was affected in most industries. Uh, and that provides a very good learning how to modernize a company digitalize the company more and also the surrounding the surrounding procedures and policies.